I want to bring in Matt Schlapp. He's the chairman of the American Conservative Union and one of my favorite guys to have on, Matt. In Stephanie. Jared Kushner's new statement, he offers a lot of justifications. He didn't read the full email from Don Jr. His assistant sent the security form too early. He couldn't remember the name of the Russian ambassador. I didn't read all of his statement, but at this point, I almost feel like the dog ate his homework at some point, <laughs> including this was a frantic time. Like, this is a tough one to swallow. Yeah, actually, I read it, and I felt differently. I felt like I was glad that there was no additional substantive information on contact uh, with the Putin government. And I think for a lot of people who have been out there fanning the flame, flames, flames of some kind of conspiracies around all of this, what we really realized with the Kushner statement is, is that, uh, you know, what we know is what we already knew previously, and there's no new uh, revelations, there's no new meetings, there's no new intrigue here. Yes, you can find all kinds of ways to say they should this or that better, but nothing substantive, no proof of collusion so far. I think most Trump supporters, this is a good day. And why would one believe at face value that this is all there is? Because he's continuously denied having any Russian money in his businesses, but we keep learning more about his businesses that he hasn't disclosed. Over the weekend, 77 other assets he inadvertently omitted from his disclosure forms. Now. I get it. He's a successful guy. But just that, given how successful and wealthy he is as a businessman, wouldn't you think he would share all of that information? I mean, the guy's yeah, father the one... went to jail, a white collar criminal, a felon. And to say, well, that assistant of mine, come on now. Well, I will just tell you, I've been in politics a long time. I'm an old guy. I'm going to be 50 years old this year. And I have been involved in campaigns that had to refile these forms. I was involved in a White House where people had to refile these forms. The reason you know all that, Stephanie, the reason why we know about these 100-plus contacts with, uh, with representatives of foreign governments is because Kushner realized immediately. And by the way, the reason why it you It wasn't know immediately. Well, it was. Let me tell you why. What you are going to discover in this process is that the day that they misfiled his forms with the FBI, they contacted the FBI and told them that they had, had filed too early and that they had to amend it. So it's actually the reason you're going to know all this to be true, including why he pulled himself out of that meeting uh, with those with those interesting Russian type people is because he, you will have emails surrounding all this. Bob Mueller will see all of the conversations around each one of these decisions. And so you will know that what he's saying was true. All of that being true then, does it concern you that Congress had to go around the president to pass this very tough Russia sanctions bill? It almost seemed like they didn't trust the president to do it himself. This is a, uh, Steffi, is a fair question. I will tell you, as chairman of the American Conservative Union, we have people like John Bolton and Gordon Chang and Steve Began, people who are foreign policy experts. They all worry about Russia and think that there might be times for Russian sanctions, including now. But most of them believe that for Congress to levy the sanctions is actually somewhat problematic. So we might agree on the policy of needing to hold Russia accountable. But congressional action on this front is probably good politics. And the president might very well sign it because it indicates that he's going to be tough on Russia. But most of the foreign policy experts I talk to say it's better. Just like with President Obama, he had the ability to change sanctions on Iran. I disagreed with him on the policy. But I think there are times when the president actually should have that authority. Why wouldn't the president want to go so hard on Russia right now even He's if going, he didn't but he it's not what he wants to do I don't think that's right look I think if you look at the geopolitical question once again I don't consider myself a foreign policy expert but those experts I talk to regularly tell me that the big problem we have on the globe right our big adversary is China Russia is also an adversary but we we can't fight both China and Russia simultaneously so just like Hillary Clinton Barack Obama tried to do at the beginning of their administration if we can at least get on the same page on some major questions with Russia and really train our uh, our, our, our coalition activity against the Chinese menace, that is where I think the Trump administration is focused because China, we need China to help us with North Korea, which is another huge problem. I mean, then, the world is really in a state of real, real mess, real chaos. Then how about getting on the same page as your own intelligence agencies? Anthony Scaramucci over the weekend again said, well, the president's still not sure about who possibly hacked the election. Come on now, whether or not the Trump campaign colluded or not, we know they tried to, tried to interfere. Why not simply state that? I don't think anybody denies that Russia tried to interfere. The president. The question, 
No, the question is specifically what did they do? And I don't know if I know or you know exactly what they did or didn't do, but I don't think anybody disagrees that Russia on a regular basis tries to disrupt our society. You believe President Trump has clearly stated that Russia attempted to hack our election. You think he has said that? I believe that President Trump has uh, agrees that Russia tried to influence this and many other elections. I'd, I'd say several elections in the past, as CIA Director Mike Pompeo said, they are, look, Stephanie, I, I don't think Donald Trump is a, is a stupid man. He knows what Russia is trying to do. He is simply trying to get alignment with Russia on some very key geopolitical questions. That's what Hillary Clinton tried to do when she brought that red reset button uh, over to Russia. Every administration post the Cold War has tried to figure out how do you deal with the Russian bear. I don't think we should criticize presidents for trying to get along to the extent we can. All right, then we're going to agree to disagree on that. Something you do know a lot about is politics. Kellyanne Conway continues to refer to the fact that some of the special counsel's team have donated to Democratic campaigns in the past by calling them, quote, Mueller and his band of Democrats. But this is what I don't get. I want to point this out specifically. Jared Kushner has donated more than 200,000 bucks to Democrats. Anthony Scaramucci, $130,000 to Democrats. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, 82 grand. So why does the president's White House continue to push this narrative, those Democrats on Mueller's team? How about the Democrats or those who have contributed to Democrats that are in the White House? Or Gary Cohn, who is a Democrat? Stephanie, how do you expect me to have an answer to that one? Brilliant opposition research. It's one of the conundrums I have, which is President Trump, I'm a conservative, but President Trump has brought together advisors, including people in his cabinet, who are either, de some of them are Democrats or Democratic friendly. Uh, their ideology is different from mine. Uh, I would think that this would be a positive thing that a lot of people on the left but why uh, would is recognize. It that Kellyanne Conway huge conflict of interest if Robert Mueller has people who have contributed to Democrats, but it's not a conflict of interest if those same people, people who've done the same thing are in the White House. I, that's a, it's a very fair question. My pushback on it would be to Mr. Mueller, who I have a high regard for, is that he ought to put together a balanced legal team. And most of the uh, lawyers I've talked to who have worked with Mr. Mueller, it is curious that he seems to have a band of lawyers that are so Democrat skewed. It makes it harder for him to make the political case that he's going to be fair and balanced in these investigations. But you don't I don't think, think just that Robert Mueller, given his history and the talent he has and the people he's brought together, are going to be fair and balanced? Let me You're finish, because I, I do. I do think they're going to be fair and balanced. And I actually think at the end of all of this, I think Bob Mueller, although I think there are legitimate questions to raise, I think Bob Mueller has proven himself to be a fair person. And I actually think with the Jared Kushner testi testimony today, there is a chance that this investigation actually gets wrapped up in a more expedited fashion because the fundamental reason for the investigation was to prove this collusion about the, the uh, election. And really, after all of this, and I know you can find faults here or there, but there's no collusion here. And if he tries to go someplace else to find wrongdoing, I actually think the, the American people won't think that's very fair. He, he was pulled together to look at this collusion question. I actually think he can do that in a, in a fairly quick fashion. Well, and I, and I trust out. his judgment. I think he's a, look, he, he worked in the Bush administration. I can't find anybody in the Bush administration who tells me he was other than a great lawyer. So you're saying there's a chance. All right, Matt Schlapp.